Once again, thanks for spending part of your day with us here on Leading Edge. I'm your host, Jeff Smith. In real estate, it's all about location. In journalism, timing's a big one. And the timing of our interview today is key. The United Auto Workers Union began negotiations with the big three last week. And there are concerns that when this is all said and done, we could could potentially be looking at a strike, which we haven't seen since 2019. Joining me today is UAW Local 14 President Tony Toddy, a friend of the program. Good to see you again, my friend. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I always enjoy talking to you. I appreciate you spending some time with us. Obviously, as I said, timing is key here and crucial, and Local 14 being a big part of this negotiation going forward. I wanted to start off today reading you something from the Detroit Free Press, and as they give a little bit of insight, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you've gotten the same word as to what's going going on here, but th the bargaining has begun, right? And GM is expected to offer a wage increase, according to the, De the Detroit Free Press article, for its 50,000 hourly workers in this new contract. That is something that, if this goes through, it affects Stellantis, it affects Ford, and it's pretty huge, is it not? It is. Uh, and, you know, because we pattern bargain, uh, what normally one gets, they all get. Yeah. Uh, but how, how big is the raise, right? And is it for all employees? And uh, another thing is our temporary employees, uh, you know, you have three different companies and three different uh, stances on temporary employees. And that's that's a big thing. It's not just about the money. Explain that so we can understand better. What do you mean three different stances on temporary employees? Well, you look at Ford, they have about 3% of their workforce that's temporary employees. Uh, General Motors is around 10, and I, I believe Stellantis is the worst offender at 15%. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's less pay, it's less benefits. Uh, you know, you shouldn't have to uh, be a temporary employee for years on end to become a permanent employee. After 90 days, the company knows uh, if you're a good employee or not, if you can show up to work or not. Uh, they just make so much money, uh, and, and those temporary employees don't get profit sharing either. So they're making the most off these people, and uh, the unfair treatment has to stop, and it needs to stop in this agreement. What, is, what are some of the biggest hurdles you see going forward as far as what could... We, we've got a 7... Uh, September 14th is the cutoff date. That's when the contract ends. So what is going to keep you guys from heading out on the strike, strike line? Well, it's up to the company, right? Uh, they understand, uh, you know, our, our contracts have been out of whack ever since the bankruptcy, and they've really been taking advantage of us. And you can see it uh, in their profits, uh, record profits, year after year after year. Uh, and, and that's off of the, the bad deals that we had to accept when the government came in and, and gave the, the loans to the companies. Uh, with that came stipulations. And we stood up and said, all right, we, we'll, we'll stand with the companies mm. to get to the other side of this thing. Well, we've been on the other side of this thing for many years. And this is going to be the contract that uh, we rectify that. Tony, let, let's dive into this a little deeper and uh, as far as our audience. And I, I hope you appreciate what <laughs> I'm going to ask here. But no, I'm just... As you talk about record profits for mm -hmm. corporations, we are looking at a time of high inflation. Everything costs more. Yeah. However, when, when you talk about times being tough for mm -hmm. everybody, the, the corporations which we're seeing the profits, and I'm not just talking about big three automakers, mm -hmm. I'm talking across the board. Yeah. You see a lot of success happening, yet where is that trickle down and why or why not is the union model a good example for what should happen as far as negotiations are concerned or, or going to bat for your employees? Well, when you look at UPS that just negotiated, a, a, well, the Teamsters that just negotiated a great deal for your, their, their members mm -hmm. at UPS, you, you see that. A and you can get a deal like that if you're an individual, right? Uh, unions' uh, reputations are at all-time high for my lifetime, right? Uh, and the only way that you're going to get a fair deal really is through a union. Uh, companies aren't going to give this out the out of the kindness of their hearts so we have to demand you know through our process uh, a collective bargaining uh, system that that gets us uh, what we need and it's not just wages mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things like job security when, when you look at uh, the battery facilities that are being produced outside of our agreements they need to come back in our agreements when you look at uh, you know the engine facilities uh, these electric vehicles of the future don't don't take an engine. So what's going to happen to that facility uh, when they're obsolete? You guys are being retooled right now. We are. We're very fortunate. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're making transmissions, but we're going to make electric drive units. We had a $760 million investment into our facility, and, and we're very happy 
that we can extend on our, our history. We've been around in Toledo since 1935, yeah. and we're going to go deep into the future. Hey. 2019, GM lost a whopping $3.6 billion from that 40-day strike that existed. Uh, Sean Fain, the national head of the union, said, or the UAW, uh, he's saying this could break with convention and attempt to negotiate deals with all three automakers at once, posing the possibility of a pulverizing strike affecting all three automakers, which you mentioned. Mm -hmm. That would be some 150,000 UAW workers at one time. You said mm -hmm. there's kind of a, a piggy bank, if you will, for this strike period. Yeah. And if all three strike at one time, what does that do? That can be expensive. Uh, so we upped our, our strike fund. Back then in 2019, the, the strike pay was $225 a week. We upped it at the uh, bargaining convention and the, our constitutional convention to uh, $500 a week. Uh, so $500 a week at 150000 uh, members, you know, that could get costly quick. You know, our, our, our strike fund is over $800 million. Uh, and historically, we, we just targeted one. Uh, and last time it was General Motors, uh, like you said. Yeah. Um, it, it, it will be interesting if all three of us go out because these car companies are ready for this moment. They've swelled their inventory as well. So uh, it, we'll see. I wanted to bring up something else when we talk about the EV situation and the retooling that is happening and a couple of things that I pulled, a couple of articles that I wanted to bring to your attention as well. Uh, former uh, Ford uh, CEO Mark Fields, he said EV demand is not keeping up with production. And he said, if you look at history and industries, when you think of Netflix, for example, when they went from sending DVDs to the streaming success that they had, there was a big issue around, can the company make that transition? And I think they were successful, he says. But the key there is they made lives easier for consumers. Right now with EVs, he says, if you're making, at least initially, life more difficult mm -hmm. for consumers, they usually take the path of the least resistance. What is your feeling as far as watching this transitional period happen and how good and or bad it is for your workforce? Well, we're very fortunate that we're still making three different transmissions and we'll take on uh, the drive units for the EV work. So the, the consumer will dictate how quick we get it to the other side, but we will get to the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, if you drive an EV, you'll really enjoy it. The question is, uh, can you take long trips with it? Uh, how are you going to recharge it if you're at work or, you know, and, and that's, that's opportunities though, right? Uh, we need to embrace this moment and see how many different jobs, especially here in Toledo, we can capture in the new EV world because it's coming. Uh, yeah. and, and he's right. Um, as we make more of them, the cost will go down, just like big screen TVs. When they came out, they were very expensive, you know, mm -hmm. the flat screens, and then they finally came down. I think this is similar to that. Uh, when you when you think about it, and I want you to give us kind of a feel. I, I was lucky enough to be inside the plant when the mm -hmm. announcement. The governor was here. We talked about that. We'll, we'll get into politics here in just a <laughs> second, Tony. But, Good times. But I wanted to see what what is happening behind the scenes right now that Toledo, Northwest Ohio, is not seeing as far as that transition is uh, going on. Yeah. Well, you know, ever since I, I uh, was in this position, I've been talking about EV. Uh, and, and you talk to politicians and everybody and you'll, you'll get the bobblehead or you know, you'll get the glazed eyes. Uh, until you see it, you just don't know it's here. Mm -hmm. uh, and now that it's here, uh, people might realize we're a little bit behind and we need to catch up. We probably need to have a EV summit for the region so we can capture uh, and, and benefit from all the opportunities of EV. Uh, there's so many of them. Uh, we can really put our region uh, in, in a very uh, good place. Profitable position. Very right? profitable position for everybody involved. Yeah. Before I go to our next segment, I, I, I want to talk just one more time as far as the strike, mm -hmm. uh, the potential for yeah. a strike. And, and what is the message to the workforce? What is the message to Local 14? Well, you know, we, we've been talking to our members uh, ever since the last one. Be ready for the potential next one. You know, it, it wasn't fun. Some members weren't ready. Uh, we, we were giving them the Money Matters uh, booklet. You know, we're, we're telling people, hey, this is a real thing. Uh, and now we've been saying that even since our new leadership came about because of the demands that they're placing on these companies, uh, the, the potential is even higher for us to go back out. Mm -hmm. We just have to be ready with all our uh, community partners and, uh, and let our members know this could potentially 
be a real thing for us once again. All right, Tony Tani, stay right there. When we come back, we will continue our conversation on the other side. Uh, UAW still hasn't come forth and said they are endorsing any candidate right now for the White House. We'll talk about that on the other side right after this. So glad to have you here with us on Leading Edge. Tony Toddy, who is the president of UAW Local 14, joining us today. But Tony, before we get to talking about politics and obviously a hot button issue every single time we come around this uh, race to the White House. But I, I, I did forget to mention at the beginning, talking about the youth movement mm -hmm. as far as technology is concerned and as far as training is yep. concerned. And some of the partnerships we have seen, you're on the board uh, for TTA yep. looking at what is the message going out these days to these students? Obviously, college ain't for everybody, right. but this is really key in a town such as Toledo. It is. Uh, you know, we developed TTA, Local 14, General Motors, uh, Toledo Public Schools, 25 years ago. And we're about to oh, break... It's been around that yeah, long. Yeah. We're about to break ground on a new EV facility for them, right? Uh, it, it will help uh, students get their certificates so they can work at dealerships. Uh, during the day and then uh, during the evenings, unemployed, underemployed people, uh, people from the dealerships that need to be trained in EV can go there as well and any displaced auto worker could use that as well. So uh, we're really excited when you think of EV, it's not your regular vehicle, you know, it's a lot of technology and kids are into technology. So it's going to be really cool. They also have an um, alternative fuel uh, lab there as well. So a lot of exciting things happening at TTA and, and we look to uh, make sure that the students there in NTPS have an option or an opportunity in this electric future at the ground floor as well. Is it one of those things, if you build it, they will come, come yeah. as far as the interest is concerned? Or is the interest already there and you guys are just facilitating it? A little bit of both. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we have a auto... Uh, uh, program at another school that they can come over and learn this as well. Uh, but it's really going to be cool because they teach engineering there. So you'll be able to see it from the ground floor. And I truly believe kids that come out of TTA will go on and develop the, the cars of tomorrow yeah. and service them in, in, in all of it. You know, we're, we're really uh, in a good position for our kids and we're thinking about them and their futures. How, how soon is that groundbreaking happening? Uh, that should be soon, uh, okay. within the next month. All right, we're going we're gonna to hold you to that. Okay. We're, gonna get, <laughs> we're hopefully going to get the breaking news here at WTOL 11. Uh, let's talk about the race to the White House. And uh, Sean Fain came out and he said that, and once again, the uh, president, national president of the UAW saying that we're not jumping in anybody's corner just yet. Um, and I guess you and I had a conversation before we came on today. There's always this mindset that union leadership, Democratic Party, liberal leadership. And you and I have talked. You've been on Fox News before. You've done interviews. There's no misguidance about that. But mm -hmm. I guess why is there that mindset? Why is there that thought that just because you've got a Democrat running, that's who the union's going to back? Well, we have a process, and, and we always want to put everything through the lens of the process, and we support those that support us. So it's not just your words. It has to be your actions. And I, I think uh, President Fain was a little upset with watching the Inflation Reduction Act assist these companies getting tax breaks to make these battery facilities outside of our agreements uh, with, with no rider on it. Um, now, I can appreciate the fact that, you know, the work's here, and, and at some point, you know, we need to do our job. and and organize a place and, 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 uh, and represent the people. Uh, but it is frustrating to watch these corporations uh, really betray us by not including those uh, battery facilities in our agreement. But, but do you have, I guess, a partner in the White House right now? Do you, what do you need in the White House in order to make things go? Well, that, that would be, I'm not going to speak for President <laughs> Fain, uh, but I would imagine, you know, maybe even putting the electric drive units that we produce into the Inflation Reduction Act and incentivize that more so it's not being made in Mexico or being brought over from China. Uh, those are our jobs. And if we're going to put trillions of dollars of our taxpayer money into uh, the, the infrastructure to make these things go, uh, the work needs to be here in this country which is kind of a conservative mindset, is it not? You know, we come from the same uh, era, and, you know, in the 80s, it was the made in the USA. Mm -hmm. and, and when you hear Republican talking points and Democratic talking points, we always talk about USA and, and making things here. And that's one thing, when you, when you talk politics, 
uh, you're, you're really uh, at an advantage when you can find that common ground. And I think we can all agree upon that. So some of the policies we'll disagree with and, yeah. and, and you know, the personalities, okay, that's fine. Sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, Americans deserve manufacturing. That's what makes a strong U.S. country or any country strong is, yeah. is manufacturing base. And, and we need to really invest and take this opportunity of this new uh, uh, technology. You right. know, this is the biggest transformation in our industry since its inception. And, and how we deal with this moment will, will uh, dictate how we look going forward. And, and there's a, so much opportunity there uh, that uh, I think all candidates for president mm -hmm. um, in office, any office, sure. should really uh, pay attention to this moment. You brought up, you've, you've, you've extended invitations, you, you've mm -hmm. had uh, meetings that have been catered to you by mm -hmm. Sherrod Brown, yep. by Marcy Kaptur. Uh, you haven't had that success with Bob Latta. You haven't had right. that success with Rob Portman when he was in office. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, it's we're all in this together at the end of the day, yeah. from Ohio and, and from this country, right? We even had Joe Biden at our union hall. Uh, we're, we're taxpayers, right? And, and the auto industry provides a, a very large tax base um, for our region, for the country. And, uh, you know, you would, you would hope that the people that represent us at such high levels mm -hmm. would care about our voice and what we need. And, and we, you know, it's just more than that. We have retirees that care about Medicaid and, and, and Social Security. We, we, you know, we're a slice of society and we have all these different things. Um, so it would be nice to be heard by whoever's running. I want to take about 60 seconds because one thing you brought up that we did not touch on is the EV factor in the negotiations with the UAW and some of these battery plants. And you said those need to be rolled in because yep. you've, got, you've got senior UAW workers who, it's not apples to apples when you look at salaries, right. working at a battery plant, working at a, at a, a transmission plant, for example. Exactly, but not only that, I, I view it as a deal breaker. If we don't get those battery facilities into our agreement, um, you know, where do the engine facility uh, members go if they close their facility because EVs don't take an engine, right? Uh, we have people at our facility from Lordstown, but there's a battery facility right there in Lordstown that General Motors owns that they can't go to. So now they have to maintain two households. Mm. And that's not right and that's not fair and the corporation knows it. So they need to do right by us. Uh, they always say everybody in and we're a family. We'll, we'll prove it by letting our, our members go back home to their family and their community. Tony, stay right there. We've got a final segment coming up. We're gonna talk a little bit about civic duty and the UAW here in the Toledo region. We'll be right back. Welcome back for a final segment here with UAW Local 14 President Tony Toddy. I wanted to talk to you a little bit before we let you go here today. And once again, it's been great to have you here and a good conversation, obviously very timely. I wanted to talk to you about the UAW and its presence here. And I, I mean, everybody still consider Toledo a union town? Oh, yeah. This is one of the best. And I worked in Detroit before in Lansing other good union towns, but this is the best union town I've been a part of. You know, we, we have a motto now uh, with other unions, you know, when you take on one of us, you get all of us. And, and not everybody has the, the size of membership that we have, and that's why we run to the aid, whether it's, you know, Teamsters, that Coca-Cola or a steer recycle, uh, we'll go out and help them. You know, uh, 1934 was uh, the Autolite strike, mm -hmm. and, and then we uh, go, or organized uh, General Motors the year after that in 1935, and our founder, Bob Travis, actually went up to Flint and ran the Flint sit-down strike, you know, and he was successful with that. And, and we all know about Flint and all that, but started here in Toledo. What does it mean to be a part of the UAW and see a civic responsibility as far as the town is concerned? Well, you know, it, it's our core principles. Uh, you know, we fight for others, not just ourselves. Um, and, and we'll continue to do that, whether it's uh, medical debt relief or, you know, just uh, all the charitable giving that we do or mentoring, you know, the, the kids in, in school to try to find a solution to the violence problem that we have here in Toledo. You, you know? ask your members to find platforms, to find boards that they can be a part of, that kind of thing? We encourage it. Yeah. Um, and, and we're very fortunate uh, that the community still appreciates unions and, and they still uh, want us to be a part of all these boards. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you look at Region 2B, all their reps are on a board. Um, Bruce Baumhauer, 
president for 30 years sure. on many boards. Uh, Oscar Bunch, our, our, our guy, was a uh, 30-year president on many boards. Mm -hmm. uh, it's expectation amongst leadership to be on boards. Talk a little bit about this time to be connected to the auto industry. And is it scary or is it exciting? It's exciting. Uh, you know, it's been around uh, for 100 years. We're, Local 14 is about to celebrate their our, our 90th uh, anniversary, uh, and we're going to be into the future. Uh, the auto industry has always been a good, stable job in this community. People know the value of that job and what it brings with uh, uh, a good wage, a good health care. Uh, and, and is each of those huge investments that we report here at WTOL, yeah. is that a breath of new life that it's not going anywhere for any time soon? It really is. It's like a skateboard, you know, <laughs> with each new uh, new uh, investment like ours for the 760 million. It's another kick that'll keep us going down the road. Yeah, good analogy. <laughs> I was wondering where that was going. <laughs> like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Tony, hey, thank you. Thank good to you talk to you again. as always. We appreciate yeah. it and uh, good luck and keep us up to speed. I, yeah. I know we're going to be talking more as these negotiations continue now. Yeah. September 14th is the cutoff. It's coming quick. Yeah. Yeah. Tony, thank you. Stay right there. We'll wrap things up for this week right after this. Welcome back for a final time this week on Leading Edge. Just want to remind you, if you missed any of our conversation, you can always go to our WTOL YouTube page and you can watch our entire interview today and any of our past interviews. And if you have any comments, questions, maybe ideas for another segment on Leading Edge, I want to invite you to email me, Jeff Smith at WTOL.com is where you send that email. And I'd love to hear from you, and I always respond. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us here on WTOL 11 Leading Edge. I'm Jeff Smith. Have a great rest of your week.